What is up, family? It's your boy D coming right back at you with another one. Right now, we're back in the lab, and a box build is on the menu. All right, so what do we have here? As you guys know from the last video, I did do a part one on this build right here, and we did use these parameters over here to do that, and we did create another SketchUp environment from scratch so I can show you guys exactly how I ended up with this product or with this objective right here. This is the objective to make a box such as this. So what we're going to be doing now is hopping back over to the built from scratch environment and kind of give you guys a refresher on what we did last time. As you guys can see, we did use a template from the manufacturer. As you guys also can see, I do have it repositioned somewhat so you guys can kind of see what we did the last time. So what we did the last time is we kind of left it at this point. And at this point, you can see that some of the surround is still going to be sticking out. And I did advise you guys that if you did not like that and you wanted a more flush mount appearance, that you may have to add another baffle to the front of this. But for my enclosure, this is what I went with. And I don't mind a little bit of the surround sticking out of it. And if you guys wanted just another refresher on what we were doing, this inner baffle right here, I should say this inner bracing right here, is all about the rear mount that this subwoofer uh, comes with or is, or is equipped with. And we can hop on back over here to Parts Express to get another look at that. You have front and rear mounting plates on this subwoofer or real mounting points and as you can see indicated by the arrows right here those are m6 m6 screw holes right here that they uh suggest that you buy or purchase for your mounting of this subwoofer so you have front uh the front holes or the front the holes in the front of the um the subwoofer are, are, are actually m5 screws which is not indicated right here i had to learn that the hard way the m6 screws are, are are actually only for the rear of the subwoofer but for the front of the subwoofer you would actually have to use m5 in my case i had to use m5 screws not m6s and they actually wanted you to have a depth of, of 30 right here so also keep that in mind but enough of that for right now what we're going to be doing is hopping on over here to Adobe and letting you guys see exactly the outline drawing for this subwoofer. And of course, this is the outline drawing that we use to build the enclosure. For all the new guys, if you wanna know a little bit more about this driver or this enclosure that we're building, just check out the previous video and you guys will be more so up to date. And this part two of this series will make a lot more sense to you if you were to do that. All right, so for right now, what we're going to be doing is hopping back over to SketchUp. Over here in our SketchUp environment, we did get finished the, the front two baffles, the inner baffle, where the subwoofer will actually rest upon and mount to. And then we have the supporting outer baffle right here, giving this a total of one and a half inches. And if any time during your SketchUp build, if you're not you know, sure of a measurement that you have made and created here within the environment, just use your tape tool. Your tape tool is actually can be found here on your toolbar over here, or you can simply just click the shortcut key T, the letter T for tape, and it will pop up for you here. And just select whatever point to point. And as you guys can see, that was one and a half. Let's get rid of this. That was one and a half from here to here one and a half inches which constitute for both these pieces being uh three quarter inch um pieces of uh wood or mdf plywood whatever the case may be for you in specific all right so we did do the two front baffles we got the inner bracing the uh the first inner bracing right here is going to be actually for mounting the rear of the subwoofer and as you guys can see we did position it exactly where it would be positioned in real world these are the back mounting uh screw holes that we just got through looking at over on parts express and this is where that baffle or that inner bracing would need to go and sometimes another thing about sketchup you would sometimes get lost within the walls of these pieces 
You see that? This is actually inside the wall of one of the pieces. And sometimes it's hard to bag out or you may lose your way. Like right now, the screen is actually turned completely white. And that is because you are so close upon a specific area or piece within the model that is hard to bag out of it. But anytime you just want to quickly get away and see your model and get to a safe distance where you can start navigating again, just go to your to your your toolbar and click this tool right here. This is your zoom extents. And what would it, what it would do is hover over your piece and put you back to a safe position. Let's do that again. So if I get trapped like within one of these walls, like you can zoom in to sketch up. Now you're inside that piece. And for whatever the reason, you can place things in here as well. This this these type of features actually come in handy uh, when using this for like architectural design and stuff like that. But in this case, we don't need that, so we will use that tool again, and it will put you in a safe place where you can use the orbit tool, or you can just the orbit tool is right here. You just click at a certain place, and it will have you orbit. You see that? pretty cool tool or you can just use the middle mouse button which is what I do all the time click the middle mouse button down if your mouse which most mouse these days have that capability so you can push the middle the middle wheel button on your mouse push it down and hold it and it will allow you to use that function as well but for right now we're just gonna click the space bar and we're gonna I like to just use the select tool it's pretty friendly it doesn't grab things and reposition them. And I just use my orbit shortcut here on my mouse. All right, so we got the front two baffles, the inner bracing, I mean, the the, uh, the inner, um, yeah, the inner mounting brace right here. And we also have another support brace right here. Let's get rid of this line that we created on the last one. And that is pretty much it. This is all structural. I could go out and put like some 45s in the corner, you know, and make this thing just a brick house. But trust me, it's strong enough as it is. This is not like it's not like it's like half inch MDF or wood or anything like that. This is going to be a very structurally sound uh, build right here. So what do we want to do now? We need to put a top and bottom on this. And the reason why we want to complete this build is for a couple of reasons. For one, you want to know exactly what this thing is going to look like and you want to measure it before you actually say, hey, this is this is done and final and I'm ready to do whatever with it. You want to know if this is going to fit within the confines of wherever you're planning on putting it at, whether that be, I don't know, behind the couch, in your trunk, in your bedroom, wherever you plan on putting this. You want to make sure that the measurements of it, its dimensions fit. So don't just get carried away with adding pieces to this thing and then you, you later on find out that it's too big to put wherever it is that you had originally uh, uh, expected it to, to go. So what you want to do is go ahead and make another rectangle from here to here. And don't worry about the way it looks now. We're going to fix that later. We're going to pull this thing up. 0.75 is what we're typing in right now to constitute for uh, three quarter inch. Then we're gonna we're gonna uh, click on it three times. That selects all of it. Right click and we're gonna make group. All right, so we're gonna copy this down to the to the bottom of it. Or oh, as a matter of fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this upwards. Okay, let's select. Yeah, let's pull this downward. This can be the bottom piece, right? Now it's on the bottom of it. Before you click that and snap it to that position, of course, control is your copy in case you guys forgot about that. And now what we can do is <clears throat> we don't need the diagram at this point, right? Because everything is up to scale. We know that this is solid. This will fit our uh, driver as we intended it to fit so we can actually get rid of this or move it out of our way for right now we don't have to get rid of it because there's still some measurements on it that we're going to use later on but uh for right now we want to snap <clears throat> we want to snap this whole piece to origin 
I just like snapping it to origin. It makes sense. Right now, it's actually below the red axis. And the red axis is like your, your ground level. So you just want to grab it right here and just snap it to origin. There you go. Now everything makes sense. You still have your diagram here, which we're going to use in a minute. <clears throat> Excuse me. Coming down with a little cold, guys. Kind of hate it, but my... My kids are sick, so that means that I'm next in line. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, so what you want to do now is, uh, for one, marvel at your work, right? Because that looks pretty damn good just to know that this thing is built up to scale. And if you cut these pieces exactly the way that you, uh, you have it measured here within the environment, that you're going to have a cookie cutter application for your new subwoofer. But for right now, we're going to use the tape tool to measure this. So how tall is it? And there you go. 17 and a half inches tall. 24 and a quarter inch long. I didn't, I didn't expect it to be 24. And a, why is it 24 and a quarter inch long? I wanted this to be 24 inches on a dot. But this is actually 20, 26 and a half inches long is what it is. I wanted it to be 24 on a, on, a, on a dot. But I forgot about the double baffle and all that and the back piece. So we can go in and do some recalculations as well later on. See, this is what I'm talking about. And, of course, this end would be the same as that end, which is 17 and a half inches tall, which is fine. And it should be 16 inches across the front exactly 16 inches all right so we got this looking pretty good top and bottom is on but i think the 24 came from here the internal dimensions is 24 which is what i did need for the tuning purposes for tuning purposes i needed the internal to be 24 inches, not the external. I didn't uh, calculate that in or compensate for that. All right, so what we're going to do now is be showing you guys how to um, already know what your cut pieces are going to look like and how much wood to purchase when you go to the big box store and get it. I mean, not everybody shop at big box stores, right? So I shouldn't even, <clears throat> I shouldn't even, um, say big box stores some of you guys probably know a local supplier that shame put shame to the big box stores so i shouldn't say that but for right now let's move on what i'm going to be doing first is create you a rectangle right and you're going to make this rectangle four by eight foot and i'm going to tell you why you want to make it four by eight foot in a minute for all the guys who, who are not, you know, uh, that familiar with, like, wood and buying, like, plywood, lumber, things of that nature, most sheets of wood come in uh, the uh, dimensions of 4 foot by 8 foot. That's pretty much what you see in the stores. So if you go in and you're purchasing uh, any MDF and, and things of that nature, it's going to be a lot cheaper to buy the whole eight foot by four foot than to buy like a two foot by two foot or a two foot by four foot. Because if you buy things in bulk, the bigger you buy things, the cheaper they tend to be. So in this case, this box right here, you're going to need more than a two foot by two foot. I can tell you that now. You're probably going to need more than uh, a two foot by four foot. Okay. So what you're probably going to be needing, well, you know, let's not even insinuate what you're going to need. Let's just go ahead and do it, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to push, pull this up. Again, 0.75, because what I'm using here is um, is three-quarter inch MDF in my case. You can use plywood, birch, or whatever you want to use. But um, in order to know exactly what you need to cut out before you even go, you, you start off with a blank piece of plywood and you take your enclosure here. You want to make a copy of it. So make a copy of your enclosure right now. And you're just going to take each individual piece, like the top piece, the bottom piece, and you're just going to place it here on top 
of this eight by four piece of plywood and that would give you exactly the cutout that you're going to need or how much wood that you're going to need to uh to build your enclosure so that month in that way you would know not only how much to purchase but you you would also know exactly how to tell them to cut your pieces you know some people don't have like um i know a lot of you guys probably don't have like jigsaws and table saws and all that that hardware that it takes to break some of these pieces down but if you go to a big box store like lowe's or home depot they actually have a free service where they will cut your pieces down to size for you if it makes sense like these are relatively large pieces for this enclosure right here so they can do this they can cut these pieces down for you now they may not be able to circle out this hole for you that's still something you may have that you would have to do for yourself but as far as like just cutting rough pieces of wood uh two foot by one foot things of that nature they'll do that for you for free so that kind of cuts down on the hassle of any of you guys who don't already have a lot of the machinery that it takes to uh, to do some of these builds. So what we're going to do first is we're just going to come and we're going to attach it right to the corner. That's the top piece. And for you not to lose track of what is what, there are two tools that you can use here. We've already looked at the text tool, right, to me, which is the quickest tool. You can come here. And you can put just put in top plate, right? You click it or you snap it there, and you can put in top plate. Always hit enter, but you don't want to hit enter, you just want to click away. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. And that'll be your top plate. And there's really no need of dragging the bottom plate because it's exactly as a top plate. So you could just clone this piece right here. But, you know, just for demo purposes, I'm going to be dragging it over here anyway for you guys, right? So, what we're going to be doing is dragging it right here. And look at this. This is why it's very, very important to do this. That piece doesn't even fit all the way. They can't fit the long way like this, but I guarantee you that they can fit this way. I'm sorry, I should have put that corner to this corner and now that fits you see so we got the top plate and now we're going to go back up here and the second way you can do this which is a longer way would be to use the 3d tool the 3d tool is pretty cool you can adjust how high the letters are going to protrude i mean extrude um which is a, right here is a quarter inch. The height of the letters themselves is going to be one inch. Uh, you can use the font, and then you can tell what type, how you want the font to look on here. This is for like beautifying something, or maybe you're making a billboard or something of that nature, or maybe you design a car here. You just want to put fancy font and lettering on it. That's how you would do it. But you can also use it for this. And as you can see, that's way too big. <laughs> it is way too big for this. But you can uh, shortcut S, and what this thing here allows you to do is just resize stuff. So we're going to grab that center handle right there, right there, and you can do it like that. But as you guys can see, that took a long time, which is why I don't use that tool for these purposes. I think the text tool is pretty efficient enough for doing this. I just wanted to show you guys that for fun. I hit enter again. I keep doing that. Just click away. And there we go. All right. So what do we have now? We still have the back piece. And these pieces are going to be a little different because of their orientation. So what I'm going to be doing is shortcut Q. And I'm just going to, oh, I didn't select the whole thing. I want to turn that whole box right so to make it easier for me to grab those sides and put them flat upon here right so here we go again grab this corner because it's going to go right beside this guy and these are going to be your different walls okay and put it here so this is left and right wall 
And I'm also going to show you guys how to measure these guys so you can see what your measurements are in just a minute. <clears throat> in just a minute. But for right now, we got to get everything labeled. No, I don't want to do it like that. And this is just be right wall. And you guys get the gist of it, right? I may actually speed through this piece. And this is going to be the left wall. Click away. And pretty much the same thing for this right here. What we're going to be doing is selecting this whole thing. Okay, select the whole thing and we're going to be flipping it. Because we're going to need all flat pieces. That's the best to work with is flat pieces like this, right? We don't want any pieces turned where we got to do a whole lot of flipping and going on. That's just going to be a headache. So grab this piece again. And this right here is actually going to be your back plate. All right, so there we are. As you guys can see, these pieces are very, very close to one another. So what I would suggest that you guys do is actually um, not, uh, I did this for demonstration purposes. Once you get to this point right here where you've gotten all your pieces on here, a lot of times what you want to do is optimize for what's the better placement of these pieces for your specific uh, cutout, right? Because you also have to compensate for, like as you guys can see, from here is edge, if I'm not mistaken, to edge almost. You see that? That's edge to edge on those pieces. This would not work in a real world application because you have to constitute for the width of the blade. If you don't compensate for the width of the blade, then you're going to get to the edge or to the last piece and you're going to be like, well, I don't have enough wood left on this particular run to cut my last piece. Why? Because the blade itself is like a 16th or more. I want to say like an eighth, maybe even, maybe even bigger than an eighth, wider than an eighth, depending on what blade you're using or depending on what blade the, um, the people at the big box store is using. You may get to a point where you see like, you know, there's a whole half inch that's, that's gone from this piece because you know, you didn't compensate for the, the width of the blade because every time that blade is cutting through that wood, it's taking wood away with it. You understand? So you're going to have to, I mean, you still have plenty of wood over here to work with, but I don't think that you can just cut the wood straight down the, the center, whatever this center point is here, and think you can make all these cuts because you're not going to be able to do that. 
Now, in my other model, I already compensated for that, and we're going to be going over. I can just do it now. Just go over here and let you guys see exactly what that is that I'm talking about. So if you come here and you look at it, I have optimized this for my specific uh, situation. So what you see here is that I have divided the eight by four piece of plywood, I mean piece of uh, MDF into four different sections. So these four different sections are two feet by four feet, each of them. And I know that I was gonna already have an extra piece over here to use for my, my amp rack is what I was gonna use this for. And the other pieces were cut from this right here. I do have the um, the advantage of having a table saw and a lot of other tools to build these enclosures with, but I know a lot of you guys don't. Uh, and also a lot of you guys are, may not have the means of transporting all of this 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 these uh these 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 big pieces of like eight by four um foot eight by four feet pieces of plywood or MDF, which is what my case was. I didn't have a truck or anything like that to transport a whole sheet of plywood. So I had the guys down at the store cut them into these four pieces where I could slide them into my car. And that's how I brought them home and I manipulated the pieces like this from this from this uh, actual uh, diagram that you're looking at right here. This is how I built my box. But um, I, I didn't want to jump here, but I didn't want to move forward without you guys getting a visual of actually what it is I was talking about. But let me go back over to here and I'm going to show you guys how to get your dimensions. OK, so you would reposition this to your liking or to your specific application. So say, for instance, you probably would get these pieces off the end here. So you you already know now that you may run out of wood. So let's get these pieces off the end so you would know that you would have enough wood to work with in the first place. So what we're going to do is we're going to reposition them and just bring them down to the end here. See there? They fit just well right here. Oh, I need to bring them up. <laughs> Sorry about that. Push the up key and just bring it up till it's flush mounted. Or you can just bring it up and say 0.75 again because that's how much you're bringing it up. <clears throat> and bring it to the edge here. And there you go. So you know now you won't run out of pieces at all. As a matter of fact, yeah, as a matter of speaking, we can just go ahead and do these two like that as well. Use Q. Your Q would, would bring out the little tool that's used to turn them on their axis. And you can just, once again, use the Move tool to position them somewhere over here. And that looks more like, you know, a real world application, this right here would. All right, so enough of that. Let's do dimensions. Right now, what your dimensions would be is you go to your tools menu right here and you just select dimensions. And how dimensions work is you will select an edge from edge to edge. And you can bring it upwards like that and click to snap it in place. And as you guys see, it gives you the measurement right here, which is two inch, two feet in this case. And then you can come here again I'm sorry. Come here again, indicated by this little pink, purple looking uh, little dot right there, and snap it again and bring it up. You can bring it. Sometimes it does do a little weird and just bring it up to the other one. And as you guys can see, that's two feet by 16 inches. Okay? And you can do all your pieces like that. And that's pretty much how. I got the other one looking the way that it's looking. But if you guys want to know a little bit like how to paint it and make it look like wood, just use your tool over here on your toolbar. You have the paint bucket and the paint bucket have different textures. Right now we're looking at stone. So if we were to click stone and select our piece of eight by four MDF, it would look like a piece of stone, a lot of stone, like a floor, right? But we don't want stone. We don't want water. Right, you can make it look like water. It's a little blurry water. What we want is wood. And we want it to kind of look like MDF, right? That's kind of looking like MDF. And this will kind of look like plywood. <laughs> 
But we're doing MDF, so that's how I, I made that look like that. And that's pretty much what you do. You can go throughout your own build and you can do your own dimensions and things and you would get an application that looks like this. These will be your cutouts. And as you guys can see, we did go out and we did position the, the screw holes exactly where they were supposed to be at. Um, and that just comes from the diagram from the manufacturer. But in short, this is how you would build an enclosure here within the SketchUp environment. And that's how I build all my boxes. All the boxes that I build start on paper first. They go to this environment to get a visual of it before I buy any wood, before I cut any wood. This is where they live first in this environment right here. And there is another, well, this is a virtual environment. And there was another virtual environment that I actually used to tune my enclosures as well. And that's going to be coming up in part three of this tutorial. But for right now, that's it for this part right here for the box build. Next is going to be tuning. We're going to be going over to WinISD. And I'm going to be showing you guys how I get things tuned as far as the enclosure and doing ports and things of that nature. So until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe to all the new guys. Please click the notification bell. Leave a thumb up if you felt like this video was good. And if you felt like you can get something out of it and pass it along to someone else, please share the video to a friend or family member and, and feel for them to benefit from these such bills as well. But until next time, it's your boy D and I'm out.